Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! When we last left off, I started up my favorite game of all time, and I am so excited to play this! Also, we opened up the first level, so let's head in. There are three new moves to learn in this world. Find my molehills, and I'll explain. Okie dokie! So, welcome to Mumbo's Mountain. We got a lot of stuff to collect here. In fact, how about we go over that real quick, uh, after this. Hmm, I'm sticky, tasty honey energy. So, if I go into the menu here, I can view the totals of everything that are in the levels. There are a hundred nose, ten jiggies, two of those honeycomb pieces is from earlier. And I've already been here 27 seconds. Man, I am way too slow. Let's speed things up here and get some stuff. Yippee! You saved me! Gruntilda has imprisoned five of us Jinjos on each world. Free us all to get a Jiggy. Me Mumbo's token used for Mumbo magic. And thirdly, and most importantly, I'm a note. One of a hundred on each world. Collect us to open the note doors. Yeah. So, if there's one thing that is kind of an issue about this game, it is the musical notes. Now, it's not really a big deal collecting a hundred of them. The problem is that back on the Nintendo 64, memory was at a premium. There's a thousand collectibles in the game, and they do not have enough memory to save which ones you got. So the way they kind of handle this is they make it so that... It keeps track of how many you've collected in a level, but it doesn't save which ones. And so as a result, if you die or leave a level, you have to recollect all the notes again. Which is... Okay, leave the level I can understand, but if you die? That's kind of severe. Like, we're talking game over kind of severe. Go away, leave my honeycombs alone. I will. Now, there are some export uh, ports on the Xbox that wind up fixing this problem. It saves which notes you got and you don't lose them. But in the process of fixing that error, they wound up causing another issue altogether, which I'll go over later. Anyway, enough standing around. We've got- oh, being hit. Rawr, this conga tree. Me hit bear with oranges. Yes, and you are doing a good job so far. Don't touch conga's blocks. Um, touching them. Grr. Clever bear find Kanga's gold. You must search for ten of us on each world. We'll help you progress through the witch's lair. When you're ready to leave this world, return to the start area and stand on the exit pad. Oh yeah, that's kind of another thing that I really like about this game. Unlike Mario 64, you do not get kicked out of the level whenever you collect the McGuffin. Chimpy hungry, wants orange now, feed Chimpy. Okie dokie. Hey, that's Kanga's orange. Put it back. Yum, oranges are nice. I guess so. Orange juice is pretty good. Oh, Chippy likes Conga's orange. Chippy helped fat Baron Bird. And there's another! That was an easy two jiggies. Let's see here. Come up here. Where are the eggs? Kazooie can learn to use us as ammo. 
Time for the buzzer to learn the ancient ways of the egg. I'm listening, Beetle Breath. Hold Z, then press the top C button to shoot an egg out of your mouth. Hey, sounds cool. Anything else? Sure. Press the bottom C button instead, and you can shoot them out from behind. Sheesh, sounds painful. Wish I'd never asked. Birdbrain can carry 100 eggs in her backpack. Oh, and you can also use the control stick to aim while you are crouching. Exciting, huh? Boo! Now that you've learned to use the eggs, here's 50 to practice with. Hmm, your energy is a little low. I'll fill it up for you. Hey, that's pretty nice of you. Alright, and time for the game's first pseudo-boss fight. Sort of. Me safe here. Bird can't hit Conga. Yar! Egg hurt Conga. Oop. Your Conga good shot. I forgot exactly what the pattern was. Erg. Bear beat Conga. Me give prize to Bear. So in this one little section, we've already encountered three of the ten Jiggies. That's another thing I really like about this game. The levels are kind of compact, and you do not have to go far to find stuff. In fact, I'm gonna bring up a uh, ukulele right now. I have the game, haven't played it yet. What I kind of want to do... Oh, I can't do anything with that yet. Is eventually play this game's sequel, Banjo-Tooie, for comparison. Because Banjo-Tooie, not as good as this game, I feel like. Banjo-Tooie is... Levels are a little too big for their own good. And to my understanding, Ukulele has similar issues, so I figure, well, if there's a bar that Ukulele needs to reach, it's banjo -Tooie. I'll just go ahead and grab this real quick. I heard a whistle. We'll get to that in a moment. Talon Trot will let Kazooie tackle steep slopes with ease. That sounds useful. How does she do it? Hold Z, then press the left C button. Continue to hold Z while moving Kazooie around with the control stick. Go practice. And yes, let's speed up a little because I know I kind of took a more hit. So this is how we're going to be traversing around the game most of the time because it is faster than normal walking. So get used to the sound of Kazooie's trotting. Hmm, you know, thinking back to the egg situation, it's a good thing Kazooie's a girl. Regardless, pooping out eggs all the time probably is not entirely comfortable. Then again, how exactly do they come from her throat? Nah, video game logic. Yippee, you've collected enough notes to break the first note door spell. Yes, the first note door spell, which we know nothing about. But clearly, that was an important accomplishment. Alright, that's all of them over there. Don't need to worry about fighting enemies, though I would like to quickly point something out. All the enemies in the game drop health when you kill them. And the nice thing is, the health doesn't disappear, so you can kind of leave it there for when you need it. Granted, I think there's a limit of some sort. Hey ugly, no bears allowed in Ticker's Tavern. Cavern, whichever. I think at most, you can only have 10 spare thingamabobs 
out at a time. Well, we can't get up there despite using Talon Trot, so we'll ignore that for the time being and head up here into this tribal village of some sort. And we're going to kill the locals. Oh, and here's the third move. I call this the Beak Buster. Jump into the air, then press Z to send Kazooie slamming hard down to the floor. Cool. I don't like the sound of that, Banjo. Get used to it, Nest Girl. You'll be using it a lot. Whoa, Banjo! There's nothing more I can teach you on this world. So, that takes care of that. Got all of the things. So now it's a matter of using our new skills to finish off the level. There's a couple of things I need to backtrack a little bit for. For example, that button I found, but I can deal with that when I need to deal with it. In fact, I'll be dealing with it before I head into the uh, skull-shaped hut sitting over there. Um, hi dude! Sorry, I kind of squashed your hut. So that's all five Jinjos. That is something that we'll have to do in every level, by the way. Find all five Jinjos. And we'll also have to collect 100 Nos. I think that's about it along with other random stuff. Oh yeah, and of course the Chen Chiggies. Of which, just then, there were two on screen at the same time. That's how close together they tend to be. And I love it. It's kind of like Super Mario Odyssey. Except the levels aren't as big. I definitely liked the collectibles in Mario Odyssey. Sure, there were a ton of them. But it was really fun just collecting them and grabbing another and another and another and another! We Juju, Mumbo's totem pole, feed us with nice blue stones. Ooh, be KB. I'm gonna wanna do some trickery here. Don't feed all of them, because if I feed that last one, I won't be able to get this. They are sneaky about that. And another! Alright, already got eight. Uh, let's see here. Let's head back this direction. Because now that I have the ability to stomp, there's something I want to take advantage of. Also, there's going to be another honeycomb piece right down here. And that's all of those. By the way, swimming in this game... A little bit taking some getting to use to, but it's not the worst swimming in the world. Holding the R button to tightly turn. And of course, Banjo's little paddle is great for getting precise control. Overall, I'd say Banjo-Kazooie has some of the better swimming controls. Uh, that bull over there is invincible. Don't want to mess with him. Hi there, Kanga. Don't mind me. There's just a thing I missed. Oh, I almost missed that. Alright. We'll have to grab that on our way out. By the way, there's other reasons why I'm playing the Nintendo 64 version over the Xbox version. In case you can't tell, I'm playing on an actual Nintendo 64. There's a glitch, like I said, involving the musical notes. There's also a few nitpicky things that kind of bother me, which is more reasons why I chose to play the 64 version over the Xbox ports. I don't know if they ever fixed those 
errors in the Xbox ports either. I just know that I encountered the note glitch on myself, and I was rightly pissed about it. Hello, sleepy dude. No, oh, not me. I'm just gonna snag all your stuff. Get up here for some eggs while I'm at it. Ah, the day when collectibles were depicted as 2D sprites. I mean, in low resolution, they do look pretty good. But once you upscale the uh, screen, their low resolutionness kind of becomes apparent in their 2D ness. Me Mumbo, best shaman in all game, can help Banjo and Filthy Feathered One. Watch it, Hut Boy. Yeah, you don't want to wind up be like with her and bottles. Don't insult her, because you have to deal with it the entire game. Alright, so we need tokens in order to see Mighty Mumbo Magic. And now comes the next thing that I really love about this game. Rumble support! Boy, did my controller rumble just then. But no, it's actually transformation. Rumble's magic, change back, come back when ready, whatever. Turn might be small, but not bad for first spell. Membo practice needed. Oh, that reminds me, there's a secret transformation in this game. Completely random whether you get it or not. I hope I get it on camera. But yeah, transformations are a thing in this game. It's kind of cool. I love transformations. There's not a transformation in every level, mind you, but there's still a decent amount of them. Hey, where did you get those shorts? I want them. Mind you, the transformations don't really do a whole lot. Basically, now I'm a tick. I can cli climb on steep slopes. And that's it. Give me that cool backpack or else. Nah. If I could get a closer look at my tick form. There we go. I find it interesting that Banjo is still wearing his shorts. But not over his legs. But over his, um... Thorax? I wanna say? By the way, this magic must be some pretty good stuff if Banjo's already learned how to crawl on six legs. Okay, I need to handle this jump a little bit better. Oh yeah, and when you're transformed... Oh gosh, Kazooie is not really able to do anything. Kinda makes you wonder what happened to her. Why can't we pop out and do the double jump? whenever we're transformed. It's so... weird. Maybe they just couldn't figure out how to animate that. Alright, finally made it out. Extra life. And this one. And while we're a termite, fall damage is not a thing. Just like with real bugs. Alright, just about done on this level. Just gotta collect everything on this here hill. And that's all the jiggies in the level. If I was not transformed at that time, I would totally be doing a jig. To, uh, during the fanfare, that is. And that was random camera changing positions there. Oh, and here's the last three notes. You've found all 100 notes on this world. Well done. Now, just to double check, everything here? Indeed, everything is here. And we made such good time, too. We can even have time to go ahead and open up the next level. Of 
Runty's magic stops you taking the notes of the world, but the 100 you just collected counts as your best note score. Try to get a hundred on each world as they are needed to open the note doors. And don't die while you're doing it, because that sucks. So that's how we get that. Can we trigger some dialogue? Not the dialogue I was expecting to trigger. Memo magic get weak. Animal turn back or magic go. That's another downside to these magical transformations. Magic all gone. Let's go back to bear and bird now. Alright, now let me see if I can trigger that dialogue. Nope. Oh, there it is. When you open a world door, baddies escape and broom once more. I should bring that up, or bring something up here when I get the opportunity. About a certain quasi fan game. But first, this is a note door sealed by Grunty with one of her powerful musical spells. Open it up then, Jam Jars. It's not that simple. To open it, you must collect the musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? The number on the door is the strength of the spell. The combined total of all your best note scores from the worlds must be at least this to break Grunty's magic. One of Grunty's musical spells, implying that Grunty has a musical theme to her when really this is it. Let me get a closer look at this effect just real quick. It's kind of interesting. I just think it is. And there's the dance that would have happened after collecting 10 jiggies in that level. That door was easy you got past. Unfortunately, you're first and last. So we've gotten into the next area of this place and... Hmm... Let's go ahead and talk to her. Hello there, young ones. I'm Brentilda, Gruntilda's nicer sister. I've crept down here to help you defeat the old hag. It's about time she was taught a lesson. I know all of Grunty's disgusting secrets, and I'll tell you three of them every time you find me. Remember them well, young ones, as they will help you avoid a fiery fate. Press B if you'd like to hear them. Yeah, these are actually important. Really important. So, lay them on me. Grunty brushes her rotten teeth with salted slug flavored toothpaste. Yummy. She also washes her hair with baked beans. Yuck! Well, that's just kind of preferable over the salted slug toothpaste. And she gets her clothes from the trash can. Alright. So the interesting thing about these rotten facts, they are randomized every playthrough. So even though these are the three facts for my file, they wouldn't necessarily be the three facts for your file. All right, just real quick, I'll head down here. You've activated a magic cauldron. Find two of the same color to create a shortcut. That'll definitely be coming in handy. And because I said I would, here's the next jigsaw.
To remove pieces that you have already put down, press the down C button. But once the picture is complete, all of the pieces are stuck there permanently. When the back of Grunty's hand whips your, your butt, you'll hardly stand. Sh sure. Kinda weird that it's C down to remove. What a random button choice. Anyway, we have now opened the next level, Treasure Trove Cove. And I will be heading there after the next episode break. We'll be right back. <laughs>